Welcome to Japan Snowboarder, episode four. I'm your host, Ken, where people call me Ken-san here in Furano, Hokkaido, Japan. The aim of this show is to understand how different snowboards work in the powder and help you find the right powder board for hitting the mountains of Japan. Today's review is on the Jones Mind Expander, which is one of my go-to boards last season for hitting the powder around the resorts of Furano, Kamui, and Tomamu. I just recently had a few epic days in quality powder around Furano. So sit back and enjoy the show. If you want to see more episodes like this, make sure you subscribe. And if you're thinking about coming to Japan next season, check us out at FuranoSnowTours.com. We are a small local guiding company based here in Furano, Japan. This is a surf inspired all mountain powder board designed by surfer and surfboard shaper Chris Christensen. Looking at the outline of this board, it is a directional snowboard where the stance is set back and you would ride this in one direction, like most powder boards. It has a blunt nose and a rounded square tail. You can imagine a pointy nose on this board if you follow the outline of the nose. What they've done with the blunt nose is reduce the overall length and weight of the board, which makes it fit better in tighter trees. And with the rounded square tail, makes this board suitable for more freestyle riding, where you have a tail to pop off any features and to stomp any landings. Looking at the board side on, it has a surf rocker profile. It has aggressive rocker in the nose, which starts behind the back foot, which makes sure that this nose will sit above the powder. It seems to have a small flat section in the middle, followed by a gradual lift under the back foot, which is either flat or might even have the slightest camber underneath the back foot, which would explain why this board holds so well when you're carving out of your turns. The rocker in the tail starts right behind the back foot, which gives this board its maneuverability and looseness in the powder. It does, however, take some of the pop out of the tail, which you would get more from a tail which has camber in it. When I think of surfboard designs and the overall aggressive rocker in this board, it reminds me of the 90s high performance shortboards, which were ridden by pros at the time. It's gonna be super maneuverable. However, with a smaller flat section in the middle, it might not be as fast going down the line. A special feature of this board is the 3D contours used in the nose and tail of the board. If you were to run your hands along the base of the board, you'll feel the 3D contours in the spoon nose and in the tail. With a ruler, we can see the lift in the sides of the nose and tail. The 3D spoon nose gives this board better flow in your powder turn from side to side and it helps the board float in the powder as it pushes the snow out to the sides which you can see in a lot of the footage. The 3D contours in the back end of the board makes the tail looser in your turns and easier to slide out when you want it to. The flex rating of this board is a 6 out of 10, 1 being super soft and 10 being stiff. It's got a nice soft section in the nose, followed by a stiffer mid and back section out of the tail. The softer nose flexes above the powder and the stiffer middle and tail of the board is what gives this board its speed and power. This board's got nice medium longitudinal flex and good torsional flex, which makes this board playful around the resort and nimble in the tighter trees, which you'll see in some of the footage. Now let's discuss how this rides in the snow. I'm 180 centimeters tall, 75 kilos, which is about 5, 10 and 165 pounds. I own the Jones Mind Expander in a 158 and rode this board a lot in and out of the resorts of Furano, Kamui and Tomamu. And recently had a few epic days here in Furano, as you can see in this review. This board is a great all-rounder for hitting the resorts of Japan. I actually enjoy and feel confident carving on this board, unlike my other rocker profile boards, which has a tendency of sliding out. 
It feels solid coming out of your back foot in those big, wide, drawn out turns as it grips nicely in the snow under the back foot, which I think has the slightest amount of camber in it. If not, it's dead flat. This board's solid too with its quick short turn and soft torsional flex. I think it holds too when carving, where it has a bump in the side cut radius, just where it says shaped by Chris Christensen. Kind of works like magnet traction. This board is just great to cruise around at any speeds, unlike the Ultra Mind Expander, which is really stiff and needs to be ridden fast. With the soft torsional flex in this board, it's great and easy to turn from edge to edge at any speeds. I like cruising around the resort on this board looking for stuff to do. Like slashing powder around the resort, going up small banks and popping an ollie off the lip, and finding spots to just launch into the powder off the paste. It's just a fun, playful board which makes me feel like a skater kid. I will say, however, when carving at high speeds on this board with the softer nose, the nose will start flapping around. However, it's fine, probably because the board stiffens up from midsection, giving you that stability. With the shorter tail and rocker in this board, you might not get as much pop as you if you want more pop out of this board, what you can do is shift your back foot forward, giving you more towel to spring from. This will make the board more suitable for freestyle riders. Now let's discuss how the Mind Expander goes in the powder. Kamui Ski Links is so much fun on this board as it has so many pillows to hit. At Tomamu, where it's not that steep, this board just glides nicely in the big wide open trees. With the 3D nose, this board just turns so smoothly. In the tighter trees and deeper powder in Ferrano, the rocker profile in this board flexes and springs back nicely as you push in and out of your turns. The Jones Mind Expander is a versatile all-mountain powder board, great for hitting the resorts of Japan. It's fun. It's playful for freestyle and free riding around the mountain. This shape is not too crazy, it's not too long, and it's nimble enough to get around the tighter trees, and it's not too short for when you're gliding in the big open powder fields. I recommend this snowboard for anyone from high intermediate to expert riders. Look for a fun, versatile powder board. This board's both good for the sole surfer and the freestyle rider. This could be a good option for a first powder board if you're used to riding a rocker snowboard. You'd size this closer to your regular snowboard. So it won't be too short and it won't be too long for you to get used to. For me, this board's more like a skateboard and a high performance shortboard in the surf. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed and got something out of this episode of the Jones Mind Expander review. If you haven't subscribed yet and want to see more videos, make sure you do so. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to leave a comment and say hi, please do so down below. And also make sure you check out our other video of how this board goes in the snow. Until next time, matane.